What I want you to think about is life is a video game. So all of us played video games, and it was very frustrating because you had to get to the next level, and the next level, and the next level. And if you think of life as a video game, then level one is redesigning sex. And rooms get very quiet when you start with that. <laughs> so let's think about that. Okay, so here's grandpa and grandma. And imagine you're gonna have a birds and the bees talk with grandma and grandpa. A little awkward. But imagine for one minute that you're not bringing back grandpa and grandma as those kind, white-haired, nice folks that sit on porches and give you counsel. Imagine you have a time machine, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna bring back grandpa and grandma as hunky 21-year-olds. <laughs> so you're sitting in a room, and your four grandparents are in front of you, and they're 21 years old, and you're gonna talk about the birds and the bees. This part they knew, because they were usually married. <laughs> but there are other parts that they might not have known. <laughs> right, so if you're talking to your grandpa and grandma, and you say, oh, by the way, we don't have to conceive today. That would have been really strange to them. Because for all of human history, for every animal on Earth, Usually, sex equals conception, and what we've done, what we take for granted every day, is that we've separated these two things. I think grandpa and grandma's eyes would get a little wide. <laughs> then you talk to them about IVF. And you say, grandpa, grandma, do you realize that now you can bring together sperm and egg and not have two people even close to each other? I would say, yeah, I've heard that story somewhere. I think you call it the Immaculate Conception. <laughs> and you know what? That's a miracle. <laughs> well, yeah, we perform miracles every day. Because maybe you go through a cancer treatment, or maybe you want to finish a PhD. And then you get to the part about surrogate mothers. And you say, hey, we can freeze eggs, we can freeze sperm, we can have a surrogate mother, and we can have identical twins born 50 years apart. So we've separated sex from time. And these are things that we take for granted, right? But about this point in the conversation, your four grandparents <laughs> are going to begin to ask some serious questions. Because in just two generations, the most fundamental aspect of evolution, which is reproduction, has been so profoundly altered that your four grandparents would think that either you are crazy or you are a miraculous version of the human species. And we take this for granted. And as you think about what we're about to do with life code, there's a whole series of levels that we are going to go up that are pretty stunning. So one of the things we're starting to do is we're starting to remake ourselves one piece at a time. Tony Atala's got a nice lab done in Wake Forest. And Tony's thought is, hey, let's think about teeth. So you're born with no teeth. Your mothers are very grateful. And then you grow a set of teeth, and you give them away to the tooth fairy. The tooth fairy leaves a little candy, leaves a little dollar or something. And then you regrow your teeth. But if you go and play hockey and lose some of your teeth, then they don't regrow unless if you become lawyers. <laughs> right? So here's the deal. Your body knows how to make teeth your body's made teeth twice. The entire gene code to make teeth is inside each of your 10 trillion cells. And if you can do it once, and if you can do it twice, why can't you do it a third time? Because the code necessary to do that is inside your body. 
And of course, if the code necessary to make teeth is inside your body, so are other organs. And so what Tony's doing is he's implanting bladders, he's implanting tracheas, he's implanting skin, he's implanting ears, the simple stuff. But he's also working on more complex organs. And what that means is, just like you redo a house and you change out the windows or you change out the furnace or you do something else, what we are going to start doing with our bodies is we're going to start refurbishing them. It'll be the same house, but the parts will be swapped out as they wear out, which takes us to life level three. And as you keep playing this game, it gets more interesting. Right? So we've now been able to clone many, many species. You've cloned cats, and you've cloned dogs, and you've cloned cows, and you've cloned a whole series of things. It's not inconceivable that we are going to start cloning humans. Now, we should not do that at this point, because it is not yet a safe, reproducible technology, which takes us to life level four. Life level four, we're going to start to edit ourselves. So it's not just that we're going to copy exact. We're going to start tinkering with the code. You know what? I like that, but I'd like to have blue eyes. You know, I like that, but I'd like to be taller. You know, I like that, but I'd like to not have this gene. More on that in the next talk. Life level five. We're building entire genomes. So we're beginning to take not just genes, but the entire program, and make things like this, which is the world's first synthetic life form that was made in a company that Craig Venter and Ham Smith and Dave Kieran and I co-founded. And what you can do with this company is you can program little green soup. And the cool thing about green soup, this software makes its own hardware. No matter what happens with my cell phone, if I leave it by my bed, I will not have 100 cell phones in the morning. But if I make green soup, I can make a lot of it. In fact, I can scale it. And what we want to do with this green soup is to make those ponds reach the mountains in the back. And the reason why we're doing that is because programmable life forms can make almost anything. So your cell phone has a computer chip, and as long as you're executing ones and zeros, then you can do apps, or you can do music, or you can do love letters, or you can do anything you want. Life code's the same. Right? But it doesn't operate in ones and zeros, it operates in the code of DNA. So this orange executes life code. Four letters in DNA, adenine, theanine, guanine, cytosine, ATCG. And how does this work? Well, it sits on a tree until one day it does that. And then it begins to execute life code. A, A, T, C, A, A, G, make a little root. T, C, G, A, C, C, make a stem. G, C, A, make some leaves. G, A, A, C, make some flowers. A, G, C, A, A, make a copy of this. Change a couple letters in this, G, C, A, A for T, A, A, and this orange becomes a lemon. G, A, A, C becomes a tangerine. C, G, A, A becomes a grapefruit. Change one in a thousand letters, you become the person sitting next to you today. Be more careful where you sit. <laughs> We've now taken this stuff and built desktop printers. And we're shipping. So you can desktop print your little green soup to make energy, to make chemicals, to store information, to make vaccines. Which leads to life level six, which is life at the speed of light. And what is life at the speed of light? Well, it means you can write nerdy articles that look like this digital biological converters for on-demand production of biologics, which translated into English means you can get a sample of the flu, you can run it through a gene sequencer, you can print a vaccine, you can ship it to this machine that's in an airplane, and that airplane will land with a full supply of flu vaccines in real time. So you're building the equivalent of fax machines, except that they're printing biologics, or vaccines, or medicines, or other stuff. Life level seven. 
But the really interesting thing about this stuff is how many different ways you can change life code. So it becomes like a multi-dimensional chess game. If you move something on this level, you're also moving stuff down here at level six. And you can do that with a whole series of instruments. You can do it in the brain, or you can do it in the expression of gene code, which is the epigenome. You can alter the viruses that change the gene code in the virome. You can change the microbiome, how food is translated in your stomach. You can change the environment. You can change the brain. You can change the input. Whole series of ways of doing this. And the curious thing about this is if you move over here, then you're moving a whole series of pieces over here in the expression of gene code. Life level. Why stop there? Why not create an entirely new gene code? Which is what Floyd Romsberg's doing in this beautiful office overlooking the golf course at Ray Pines in La Jolla. And what he did is he took the basic code of DNA, those four letters, A, T, C, G, and he said, is that the only conceivable way to create heredity and a living life form? And after working for a series of years, he found he could substitute out two of those base pairs. So instead of having ATCG, he creates ATXY, which is a completely different life code from anything that's existed that we know of on Earth. And as you think about that, you create a parallel branch of evolution where you could have plants that are immune to every virus and bacteria on Earth. But why stop there? Why substitute two of the base pairs? Why not add them? Because then you go from 20-some-odd building blocks into 172. And your palette goes from, call it, 20 crayons into 172 crayons. So we are really redesigning life at this point in pretty fundamental ways. And that means we're not a unique solution. That means we can grow life forms and create heredity with a very different chemistry. Which means as you're thinking of life forms in places like the liquid methane seas of Neptune's moons, the chemistry might be very different, even though we wouldn't recognize it as a life form that could survive on Earth. And coming back to Harvard, one of the things that they've been doing is they've been building biohybrid animals, mixing rat cells and rubber and gold and a whole series of other things. Life level nine. We're starting to hack the brain. We're the only species that has ever tried to decode its own programming, both its genome and its memories and its thoughts and its consciousness. And that's a hell of an adventure. As you're thinking about that, what Ed Boyden's been doing is he invented or co-invented something called optogenetics that allows you to begin altering the firing of neurons or the not firing of neurons using little beams of light. And once you begin to do that, then you can build your own very simple off-the-shelf laser and viral injector system for in vivo optical neuromodulation. Yes, kids, you can try this at home. <laughs> which leads to life level 10, which is, could you store and reproduce the brain? That's the stuff that Madeleine Lancaster's doing. She's building these little organoids, which are brains in a Petri dish. Very small, very inefficient. But once the stuff starts to flywheel, and once the stuff starts to scale, it gets amusing fast. So why stop at the current brain? At life level 11, why not build one big brain and start sharing and molding memories and melding them? I've heard this somewhere. Where in the world have I heard this concept? <laughs> Who's going to do this stuff? Well, here's the basic computer science curriculum for building neural networks as engineering design challenges. And these are curriculums for high school computer science class. So we may not do it, but your kids are going to do it, and your grandkids are going to take it for granted. And as you're thinking about this stuff, it does create one or two small ethical, moral challenges. Because <laughs> if you can modulate memories, you can erase memories, you can insert memories, you can modularize memories. And who's going to control this stuff? And what are the rules on this stuff? And that stuff we're going to face. Life level 12. Why stop on Earth? Why 
why not begin to design an interplanetary species? Why would you ever want to do that? Well, because it turns out that solar system tourism has a couple of issues. Your heart starts to screw up. You start to get hearing loss from cranial pressure and CO2. Your bones begin to demineralize, so you can't really walk a lot. You get big kidney stones. The high energy particles start to really screw up your brain. Radiation is like getting a full CT every five days as you go to Mars. And there's vision loss for over 60% of the astronauts. So if you are ever going to live on the moon, or if you're ever going to live on Mars, or go further beyond that, you have to fundamentally change the human gene code, because there hasn't been an evolutionary pressure on Earth to adapt to those environments. And then there's the ultimate level, which is life level 13. Could you ever design an interplanetary species? If we ever want to get beyond the solar system, at current speeds, Proxima Centauri, Proxima being close, is a mere 17,000 light years away, 17,000 human years away. Oh yeah, the rockets can get faster, but it's still going to be a thousand years to get there, and you fundamentally have to change calorie consumption, human longevity, the design of the body, and that would require building almost a completely different species. And we have to ask, okay, so what do you want to keep about this? What do you want to enhance about this? And what are you going to allow changed? And that's probably the greatest adventure humans will ever face. So now let's go back to the beginning of this talk. Now we're going to take that same time machine, we're going to bring back all of you. Your grandparents are now 80 years old. You are sitting in front of them as 21-year-olds. What are they going to take for granted that's going to shock you as much as we are shocking the previous generations? And how much more are our grandkids going to do by the time they're 80? that will seem perfectly normal and natural. And coming back to one of my favorite thinkers, Stuart Brand, the present moment used to be the unimaginable future. And that will be true for our kids, and that'll be true for our grandkids. And this is the greatest single adventure and exploration we've ever been on. And that's the reason why Life Code is just such a cool thing to be involved with today, and so much fun. Thank you all very much.